<laughs> All right, viewers, we are back and we are a week late. I'm very sorry. Uh, uh, actually, we are very sorry that we couldn't shoot our last episode and Warren and I got really busy. Yeah. However, uh, it's a lucky number 13, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, today we'll, uh, I always insist on having your digital real estate, right? Yes. So uh, let's let's go back in time and in the old days when there was no website and no internet, or obviously it's been there for a while. However, right. we used to do business the traditional way. Uh, what was the first thing that we did? We used to acquire a, a small real estate, open an office, start distributing pamphlets, right? So in the in this digital era, website is your digital real estate, and uh, it builds your credibility. You need a website to so that people could go and check about you and uh, see uh, that you are present here and you are valid. So it gives you that uh, certain amount of validity. It, uh, it gives the, it, it is a, an address for you where people can come and check about you. However, not every website does its job, right? Amor? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So today we'll check, uh, we'll discuss about the top 10 <laughs> mistakes that people do while building a website. So Anmol, yeah. what are the <laughs> top 10 mistakes that people do? So first of all, for our audience, uh, these are the, uh, so the list was really hard to get You know, there are so many reasons that uh, are uh, there, you know, what could uh, have gone wrong with your website. But uh, the, the, so in today's episode, we will be focusing on the most common 10 from the past 2.5 years of experience in the industry. And, you know, uh, co coming in contact with so many individuals on a daily basis and trying to understand what uh, is in their mind when they are going for a new website as well as with the developers who are trying to build a new website or the marketers who are giving the directions to their team and the misconceptions that people have uh, exactly the website the lack of clarity. exactly yes so we'll be going that that is the most common one yes. so basically uh, you know the reasons that we are going to tell you are more of universal so the first thing is like ashwin told lack of uh, clarity and the goals with the website so uh, let's take an example. Let's go back to the older days to help you understand this much better. You want to have a business. Okay. You want to market it. You want to do a lot of stuff. But if you are not clear what exactly you want to do with it. So let's say I bought a real estate. Uh, let's take an example for our office. So before starting Propsicle, let's uh, think, uh, let's uh, take an example. I bought this office, but uh, I do not have anything to do with it right now. So it's a uh, money gone waste for me as at, at that point of time, because I don't have any clarity to do what with it. Maybe it's not the right place for me to start my business. Let's take an example. I was not running an IT company, whereas I wanted to have a factory. Or I couldn't. Or it could be the other way around as well. Uh, yeah. You, you have, you have, you know, uh, your business. I mean, you have started yeah. a business, but you have bought the office or you have opened a shop in the wrong place. Exactly. You have you don't have the clarity about your target audience or your where your people would arrive. Exactly. Right. And the same mistake people do with their website as well. Their website, yeah. People are not uh, very very clear what they exactly uh, want to have in the long term with the website. They just think that it's just a uh, online place where you go. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. you keep dumping stuff. <laughs> where you keep dumping stuff. But it's not like that. You do yeah, not so keep website, website, website is not a go down. Website is not yeah. a go down. It is your office. <laughs> it is your office. <laughs> In the back end, you could make it your go down, but yeah. the front end is not your go down. It's basically where people see you. That's where you know the, if you are not clear. Let's as the owner of the business. Yes, it is your showroom. It is if it's not it the is office, it is your showroom. But it is not a go down. It is not your it's dump yard where you keep keep. Uh, uh, posting your uh, uh, you can keep uh, dumping your uh, uh, unwanted crap crap <laughs> it's not your facebook timeline <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah. i said crap he said crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that that is the you know core thing that where people first go wrong when uh, you know what we have analyzed and seen till date with you know when we converse with people they will say i need a website like this 
why you need a website like this uh, you, you are a startup right now you do not want to have such a big website like mintra start small right you need to have that clarity where i am going in the next 10 years okay if we, you are coming to me and, uh, and saying me in the next 5 years i want to be like mintra then i can suggest you this is how you start then this is how you or, scale and this or, is what you do actually the best example that we have from recent uh, uh, one of the clients that we were trying to uh, oh yeah perfect to, yes that's the they perfect thing know, I, i mean yeah they didn't know what what uh, what was the difference between a marketplace and an e-commerce uh, website so just elaborate right. on that point a little bit on yeah that. so the you know the con- uh, so for our audience the conversation started like any other conversation the client came to us they told that we need a website okay good what do you need for that uh, that website for they said we have some vendors we will be putting their products on our website it will be a e-commerce website okay mm. not a problem me and ashwin we you know went all the way in we tried to understand their requirement we pitched an e-commerce website to them we told them the scope of it of the website everything was done and it was about to be closed but then certainly these guys come back to us they said no uh, what uh, we need this feature as well in our website uh, which means that our vendors can post their uh, products on our website once we approve it yeah. i said that uh, this is not e-commerce this is uh, basically a multi uh, multi uh, vendor login marketplace so then again the conversation went back to zero we started from the scratch again we tried to understand what feature uh, what features they need then the conversation became in phases now the website got divided into phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and we have already spent more than a month me and ashwin you know going back and forth try to understand the requirement but all of this pain happened for the client and for uh, as well as for the us is because the client didn't had the clarity they didn't knew what they wanted with the website and uh, when the, you know after so much of brainstorming and everything they, they they came to a conclusion we need a marketplace like this i won't name the brand they want to go to but uh, you know that that was the marketplace that they are looking for and in the end you know we have also wasted so much of time they have also wasted so much of the time and then uh, nothing happened so you know this is one just one of the reasons makes painful for both of us so if you are going to build your website i highly recommend you first uh, uh, take a piece of paper write down what your business is all about that's why business planning is really important me and ashwin know what we are doing with our podcast we know what we are doing with propstickle so we are very very clear with it i don't want to make make propstickle in e-commerce website so i won't go for such high you know hosting or something like that i will do the basic stuff that is required to keep my website alive as a startup just giving an example so that is the first thing Take so a piece of like paper. Actually, we are a digital marketing company, and we start selling shoes also on our website. Right. It does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. So you need to have the clarity what your website is for, and if that website does only one job. You cannot do everything over there. Yes. Example. Right. And second thing is, uh, obviously, uh, your website will cost you, uh, if not a lot of money, if it will cost you some amount of money, significant amount yes. of money. uh you when you buy the domain when you uh, you buy, buy the platform you when you are uh, get hiring a developer obviously some amount of money at, uh, if not uh, nothing but 20 30000 ru- rupees are gone in it that that's the starting basically it can Absolutely. go up to 20 30 40 50 lakhs like so. so if you even my my point is even if you're putting 100 rupees in in something you better have the clarity uh, uh, why are you throwing that money away for that exactly right so and uh, this website does not come in 100 rupees it uh, definitely costs you in thousands so you exactly. better have a good amount of clarity because uh, having a website just for the sake of it uh, it will not uh, gonna give you any results exactly makes sense totally makes sense right. and then you know uh, like uh, the next phase of it uh, talking about the user experience right. you know the user experience most people in this world ignore that part of it they right. never think what the user journey should be on the website they just say i need uh, okay now you are clean or clear on your vision therefore if you look at it all the problems are arising from the first problem itself first the problem itself right. yeah right. so <laughs> exactly. that trickles down to i mean the rest of the points that we'll discuss uh, the, the problem number one that we we'll discuss is the mother of all the problems so exactly that, that's you know we have made the podcast like a pyramid <laughs> right so amol will tell you uh, what is the first uh, son's name is <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, first of all uh, like uh, for the people who does not know what user experience is 
so let's uh, try to understand by, uh, it by a simple example so when you go to a you know a retail store let's take an example you are going to a uh, you know grocery store or something there are certain uh, you know places where they keep stuff why they keep stuff to give you an experience now let's take an example i remove that experience so when you enter that store you will get confused where should i go to buy what how i go and buy it because there won't be any uh, you know markers to walk you through to guide you to give you the exact idea where the things are kept in that store that will uh, totally make your user experience crappy and you will probably walk out of the store and go to some other store where you know exactly where your things will be kept what you want to buy so the same thing applies when you come into the digital world now think about your website me as a user when i come to your website and i don't know where i will find what i am trying to uh, what i what i am looking for while your ad said that this is what, uh, uh, what you are offering but when i come to your website it does not show me that as a user i will just move on to another website because in digital space i have uh, a, a very short attention span i may look out for 10 to 15 seconds on a website about that product but then i will probably move on if it is not that clear to me and i do not see value in it so user experience most people ignore that but that is one of the key factors that your website has a very very high bounce rate and you are not able to retain your customers and you are probably having a lot of for the ignorant uh, please elaborate what is bounce rate yeah so bounce rate is basically me when i come to a website and i immediately uh, you know go go off from your website that is the uh, that is bounce rate me as a user i have i have come to a website and i bounced out so sometimes what happens is when i am in a mall okay uh, uh, i uh, let's say let's say i entered into the wrong showroom and i immediately came out of it i didn't do anything there i didn't even uh, bother to see what is there i just came out so that is bounce rate for them and i want what are the repercussions of uh, the bounce uh, having a high bounce rate so if you have a high bounce rate so the number one issue that you will face is with google google does not rank websites which have a high bounce rate you need to reduce it because if uh, google knows that your website is uh, not giving their users a good experience why will they rank you in the first place so, so anyone that who is... understands the seo i mean uh, every, i mean pretty much everybody does uh, yeah. however for the layman and the ignorant seo is search engine optimization you want to when you search for something uh, you want uh, i mean suppose you sell shoes and if someone is searching for shoes you want your name to be ranked amongst the top four to five uh, names that appear on the search uh, page so the fight and the race is for that uh, that position in the, on the search engine page right and search engine being the google right so exactly. i'm just elaborating it for people because we have clients and not everybody is a digital marketer and uh, we don't expect them to be right right so anyways this podcast uh, everyone watches this podcast so we need to elaborate it for people uh, that why it is important and uh, what is your psychology when you are searching for something you will go with the first few websites that you see on top and you see that they are selling your product or uh, they are giving you that kind of service the uh, you won't go beyond the fourth name that that is a basic human psychology exactly uh, right uh, nobody has gone from the first page to the second page of google very few exactly. people do unless you are not able to find if the first page is not giving you the results then you go to the second page i mean when right. you're doing very deep research otherwise if you have found what you want in the first four five names uh, of the website you 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 won't even go beyond the you know basic uh, half of right. the web the below half of the website you won't even take a look at it so the whole idea is to be there on the top and uh, what anmol said if your bounce rate is bad which is if people come and go so this is just one of the factors for uh, your seo that affects your seo just uh, for our audience above 60 per, uh, 60 to 70% is a bad bounce rate uh, so if you yeah. have high high rate so uh, then obviously google thinks that your website is useless it is irrelevant and uh, it's uh, artificial intelligence puts your uh, algorithms they put your website down and uh, they bring the people who are doing good the good boys come up uh, yeah. and uh, the bad boys go down so bad <laughs> boys don't always win <laughs> yeah, you, you pick 
become a backbencher and uh, obviously <laughs> the teacher is not paying attention to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but here it's business so you need to be a front bench <laughs> you need to be on the front bench right? yeah <laughs> so uh, for our audience to give give them some tips how they can uh, they do not make this mistake is when you start a, your website ask your development team to first map a user journey for you on a wireframe so that you exactly know when my user comes on the website okay the first section will be the banner what will that banner showcase it will it will it be a with a picture or a tagline or it will be static image or it will be a video then after banner what i am going to see is is it uh, so is it our case studies or is it about us and then after that it might be that you are giving some contact form to contact or you are giving them more information about you that uh, helps build trust so think from your uh, just put yourself in your customer shoes think from that standpoint and then build your web, uh, website further without doing this bit of it do not ever make your website mm. now moving on to the next mistake it's ineffective navigation so uh, recently a part of user interface right yes it is a part of user interface but i would like to elaborate more on this because recently with one of our clients this happened so yeah so what happened is basically uh, we improved their website uh, user uh, experience we thought we improved it but once the customers start to come on the website they were not able to navigate to the exact products they are looking for so let's take an example i visit amazon and they have removed the search functionality and the categories now imagine <laughs> you need to have that proper navigation with you because still uh, you know many a times i just go to the categories on amazon and i try to browse through it okay what comes under this uh, what are the new products and all of those things so amazon is it generating interest in me that i come to their website and do that, that kind of stuff same happens with your customers when they come to your, they, your website your pages might have a good uh, experience for them but if your navigation is not clear where it's leading to what are the next steps that your navigation will lead to they won't be able to uh, explore your website and they will probably can you explain this with an example and more like if probably i don't know if you can Uh, share your screen and show something uh, what a good navigation is what a bad navigation is yeah of course of course why not because this is something that needs to be you know uh, a bit more detailed uh, for uh, especially like uh, like i said it is meant for most of the business owners they are not digital marketers they are not technical people it is exactly to understand what uh, right So let's take an example. I come to this website. This is one of the recent website that we help them with the navigation of it. So when I come to the website, as the as a customer, if I want to buy their products, where will be the first place I will go to? It will be the shop. Shop. When I go to shop, I need proper clarity. What all products they are selling? What are their categories? And then I will see where do I need to go. So let's take an example. I saw an ad of their yoga mats. So I click on yoga mats. now in yoga mats i have a clear direction what mats they are selling what all they have what is the pricing what is the review it interests me so this is what a good navigation experience is right now show me a bad navigation <laughs> of course i will go to one of the top websites <laughs> because i i always focus on failures right <laughs> <laughs> so now coming to one of the <laughs> biggest meta platforms Okay. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is your revenge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a not exactly revenge, but just telling people, you know, when you become such such a big company, he strikes back. It's like Star Wars, revenge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, when I come to Facebook, there is so much on Facebook going on on Facebook that I don't exactly know where I should be going further. and in most cases i just go to the watch tab i watch some reels and i exit because the platform has become so elaborate if you think ashwin from a common man's perspective we are marketers we know the platform we always uh, uh, you know find our way through it though it takes some pain but we always do it but think from a layman's perspective you and i we are not uh, digital experts let's take an example i go to facebook i download the app on my phone now they are in, they have so much of it it makes so hard for me to find even basic settings so this is in my perspective and you know what i have heard from others as well 
this is not good user experience no, you should not. be very very clear it is a, it is definitely outdated i mean i i don't yes. think uh, they i think they stopped updating google after 2015 uh, sorry google, uh, not google uh, facebook and there is actually if you go to right now if you go to instagram ashwin you will basically find exactly what you want exactly instagram the navigation is so superior on instagram i just you know i am able to find everything right true it even is, as a new user uh, uh, the the detail i mean that the magic lies in simplicity right so exactly the app so the simpler it is uh, the website the easier it is for people to understand yes 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 that, that's why you know you see uh, on facebook how they have uh, you know uh, killed most of the user base they have moved to instagram hmm. why instagram is such good user experience whenever i open the app i feel really good opening that and so then i see... and then you okay. see the same pictures on facebook you see the same stories on facebook they don't look good they exactly look really <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> Well, that this could be a, a different whole different podcast altogether about Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> let's go back to website. Yes. Yeah, so, let's go back to website. In the website uh, terms, uh, since we are talking about website, right? So, uh, if you could show us or tell us something about bad user experience on a website, like uh, what could spoil the bad user, uh, uh, interface uh, uh, or the navigation, bad navigation that is there on a website. right so for this right now we do not have any new projects going on that i could show <laughs> where uh, you we are helping the client improve the user experience so i describe give an example of uh, like uh, where could the navigation go wrong okay so the uh, let's take an example for the brand that i show that i showed earlier so if in their shop they 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 let's take an example instead of products they put all the other stuff that they have they put uh, their future plans they put their investor relations they put everything there mm. that is not something as a customer i want to see mm. as a customer i want to go to the shop i need to see the products i want to buy them i do not want to see what you are doing in the future or what are your invent investor relations or what the recently people in the news have said about you or maybe what influencers are saying about you right now i'm just focusing on already you know getting into your shop and buying the stuff that i want i want to spend my money that that's the mindset whenever i go oh, okay let's take an example of apple you and i we use iphone whenever you want to buy an iphone you will enter the shop and you will take it you're right right but let's say on apple's website they just put our phone is environmental friendly this 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 and there is no buy button how frustrating it will be sure will it be or not you will get frustrated probably you will on never buy, buy button is uh, somewhere located somewhere like where hidden yeah you won't look at it yeah exactly yeah. i will just bounce out i know what your phones do i know what are the specifications i have already done my research right now i want to buy it i want to just go and buy mm-hmm. if not if it's not uh, letting me do that easily i will probably go go to some retail store and get that for me mm-hmm. right so that that is a uh, you know that's how it works great yeah so uh, coming to the next point now next point is basically ignoring mobile responsiveness still there are few people in this world who ignore mobile responsiveness right and i highly recommend a lack of clarity it is a lack of clarity again they do not think who their target audience is and these days it has become a necessity to make a mobile first design because even working professionals they are so st- stick with their phones right now of course uh, people might op- people might be on their office laptop they will be working but again besides they will have their phone open all, always and then they they are scrolling through things right, right. this is how these days things are right. now and here the worst or the best example is the government related website government exactly is government irctc whatever you name <laughs> none of them are mobile responsive mobile optimized you always have to open your computer which has a big screen resolution so even tourism related websites exactly by government by now, government website or uh, responsive you'll go and you'll be scrolling it here and there <laughs> <laughs> and in the end you would get frustrated and but still you have to get it done somehow <laughs> yeah so that's the painful thing so in terms of mobile optimization what i recommend generally is if you are building your website first of all think it from a mobile standpoint how your website should be looking on a mobile phone your design should be mobile first design rather than desktop first first it should be mobile then it should be tablets and then it should be desktop it should go like that 
because these days phones are also so big tablets have also some people are taking using tablets as their mobile phone because they have cellular options as well mm-hmm. and a lot of things are opening, happening these days there are so many you know apple watch if you have an apple watch and you have a cellular uh, device you will be probably scrolling in your watch this is not apple watch by the way just for our audience <laughs> i'm not that rich right now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so getting back to the topic so these days screen sizes are so different like even if you see I, uh, one of the good examples so you see in the background of ashwin how big is that screen yeah ashwin uses amazon fire stick we said okay now this is not a product endorsement <laughs> i'm not endorsing the product but i'm just telling people there's a fire fire stick in this one this is a yeah. smart tv <laughs> okay so yeah but still you know the screen is so big you can browse even you know since that time even we have also got the smart tv uh, i am always on it and browsing through things it is a different screen size mobile is a different screen size people are going across a lot of things and even these days very good example is billboards some of the billboards are connected with the internet and they have dynamic content oh yes yes they are very big screens mm. so you, uh, you need to always have responsiveness in your mind mm. mobile optimization is also important but as per your audience it should be if your audience is sitting on a bus stop and it has a dynamic board which Uh, brings data through internet it should be optimized for that rather than mobile phone you need to understand where your audience is where you are putting that thing on where your uh, website is going live maybe your audience is someone who only sees it on a smart tv then you need not to uh, focus first on mobile your website should be smart tv first mm-hmm. focus on your audience then you need to have clarity who's yeah. your audience where where where's your focus going to be yeah what device your audience will see so yeah. all these things come under clarity so basically like any other business you know when you are getting on on website you're planning to have a website you need to have a clarity so basically it started with the clarity and we are just boiling it down to what leads to clarity right yeah, yeah. then the next thing is uh, it is one of the uh, most common one these days slow website speed so due to reels you know and the current times and the short videos our attention span have gone from this to this <laughs> we basically have a attention span of 3 to 5 seconds and that's what google recommends Not for the website seconds. ranking on the top 3 seconds now 3 to 5 seconds your website needs to open within this time frame else i am not opening your website this is what is happening these days so most people are, most websites right now even go, uh, talking about government websites or other websites they are pretty slow so i will put some resources in the uh, you know description of the video so recently google put out a report that maximum websites on the internet don't fulfill the criteria that is going on right now in terms of the website site speed they are not able to achieve it and uh, many are ignorant about it they said oh, uh, i have built a website it might have a good user experience it might have a good ui it might have a good navigation but if it does not loads i am not coming to your website so how it works is basically let's take an example you opened a retail store somewhere uh, in my city and it's so remote that i cannot reach it it's inaccessible to me i won't be coming there same is the case with your website if it's not easily accessible it's not opening uh, fast it's if it's not giving me that experience i will probably move on to someone whose whose website does that it is a simple sales rule that like uh, i am I'm, i'm from sales so i know the yeah. basic rule is that you have to pick up the phone within three rings right right <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, if you have a showroom if your <laughs> door is locked and people are trying to enter and you're not able to open the door obviously you lose clients the people will start moving away so exactly or or if you have an office uh, somewhere in a remote place people have to cross drains and go through mud and then reach your place uh, go through thin alleys and find your office people will be reluctant to come to your office it's the same thing over here if there is any kind of delay if the customer is impatient forget about the modern days and internet spoiling people's uh, concentration but customer is always uh, very impatient they want their product they want their service immediately and they'll go right. someone who does it like that exactly now coming to the next point which is the most important one lack of seo <laughs> optimization yes let's let's elaborate the point of seo <laughs> yeah search engine optimization yeah 
might uh, sounding like a very big term to many people <laughs> and it is it is very important it is a big deal it is a big it is a big deal, deal. it is a big deal so many companies are dependent on seo that if uh, seo was not there they won't be doing so good that they are doing right now right. and even uh, so uh, telling our audience what seo is so when you search something on google let's say right now i search for uh, iphone 14 near me give me an example or let's say i search for share the screen and uh, show it like uh, yeah. Uh, you know, let's make it more visual uh, for our audience. Perfect. Yeah. So if I go on Google and I search for iPhone 14 near me. So first of all, I get the Apple's website. No, then I get these. <laughs> yeah. And that's where this example came to me. <laughs> you see, uh, people, I, uh, Anmol has opened the very first website that showed on the search engine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here there is something interesting. Yeah. Let me just open my incognito window hmm. and type the same term. Now you see, in this screen, it does not show which iPhone I have seen. In this, it shows me. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, getting to the point. So, Apple has done some sort of SE on their website. That is why they are ranking on the first, uh, you know, result. If they wouldn't have done your web, uh, done SE on their website properly, probably Chroma, Unicorn Store, Vijay Sale, Bajaj Market, or Flipkart would be ranking above, which wouldn't be good for their business. We must give credit to Apple for this because most of the original brands they have not done this kind of SEO. Exactly. Because uh, okay, uh, Anmol, you type red Nike shoes, my favorite, yes. right? Yes, yes. Nike shoes. And Nike won't be on top. I can challenge you on the, uh, that. Amazon would be on top. Oh, oh they have done it. They have done it. <laughs> done it. Last time in the last podcast episode, they didn't do it. They didn't. Yeah. Amazon, yeah. Still, Amazon and Flipkart are still ranking up. Yeah, they are still ranking. But they usually used to rank above Nike. <laughs> yes, they used to rank above Nike. Right. Yeah. Oh, my. Nike is, uh, has upped their game. <laughs> yeah, Nike has upped their game, seriously. But yeah, it is good for the brand. They would have realized how much uh, loss they are facing because of this. Because right. so when you're... It's the same if you're not ranking on your own name. Exactly. Right. And even I see, you know, for some brands, when I type their name online, their uh, website does not come on the top. There are different websites that are coming and I probably go to a different brand. Like uh, recently, I don't remember the name of the lead that we were talking to. But if you remember when we were searching for them on the internet, we were getting a lot of different websites. It was so hard to, you know, get their website. Mm. True. It took me, uh, you know, five to six results to exactly see the company's name, which is not good at all. Mm. When I am looking for you, you, uh, you know, I am a lead for you and you missed out on me. Mm. It's just that I was so curious to know about the brand. So I had uh, made that effort to go, but maximum users, they won't uh, make that effort. Right. If your SEO is not good, you are losing out on a lot of business, even when you are uh, renowned in the market. Slight uh, nitty gritty is in brief uh, how SEO works and what goes into SEO and what makes your SEO better. Yeah. So obviously so, one is having a good bounce rate that we've already Having done. a good bounce rate. Second is having a good user experience. Mm -hmm. Third is having a good UI of the website, which the user looks so it reduces the bounce rate. and one of the most important things is having good content, relevant content. That is exactly what the audience needs to look right now. So for the, uh, like, uh, the audience, uh, uh, my, uh, are, uh, to be clients or people who don't know about it, Google actually goes ahead and reads your website. It has these, uh, bots, which are called crawlers, which will come on your website. They'll read your website and they will rate your content you know, uh, how well written it is. It, it doesn't have to be Shakespearean English, mind you. Yeah. But it has to have the right keywords. Keywords being like red Nike shoe was a keyword. Okay, a red shoe is a keyword. So suppose if you're selling shoes, if you're selling Nike shoes, those keywords need to be there. So uh, basically the crawlers come and read and experience a website from the perspective of a user. And they that's how they rank your website. So I'll let you elaborate this a little bit more yeah, yeah. and uh, so another thing is like uh, when you uh, write your content first your keyword should be there most of most of all it's important to be curated towards your target audience 
that's how you know google is now rating so initially if it was 2019 google uh, algorithm was a bit different you could have cheated it and uh, probably get your website ranked through uh, other off page activities and or, all of these sort of things 2010 Yeah, that time people used to pack keywords. If you that the old websites, if you remember, uh, yeah. uh, red shoes, red shoes, red shoes, red shoes. They they used to write it on purpose on those websites. Yes, looking websites, uh, the old ones. If you remember. exactly, exactly. But you know, Google has uh, you know transformed so much in yeah. these years. It has learned so much about this. Very intelligent. Very very intelligent. intelligent. They know exactly know what you have done with your website. If it is. Site, yes you cannot cheat i mean uh, obviously there it's called keyword packing it's not that if you're selling shoes you will keep writing shoes 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 all over your website uh, there is a limit to use uh, uh, to the a number of keywords that you, you can use on your website so that is why i mean um, why we are explaining you is basically search engine optimization is a labor oriented task and uh, the per- person whoever is doing it for you uh needs to be continuously updated about uh the google's algorithm being updated because google keeps updating its algorithm every second day if yes not now connecting with our next point poor content strategy poor content yeah content is the king <laughs> most people uh, should have heard this yeah <laughs> yeah so if your content is not good again why will i come to your website if i cannot understand what your product description is let's say you are a new brand in the market you are selling something new and uh, when i visit your website your ad interested me i came to your website and i am not able to understand what your product is all about how will i buy it i don't know your product in case of apple it's different they have already done their brand awareness you are but doing right, right now how will i know your brand how will i know the thing that you are selling there is no other way i will bounce off so content strategy is something when uh, you build your website you need to focus on it your content is something that people will look so looks matter journey matters but of course they will also read on your website the products that you are selling if your product name is not clear or if you are a lead generating website and you are not giving them the proper value proposition that you are giving how will the user be convinced to give you their details how will the user be convinced to you know click on that add to cart button and buy your product sure. they won't be so content strategy is something that i tell everyone you should focus on a lot of content and good content good quality content now uh, for the layman i'll just explain them in what forms do contents go on a website so on a website the uh, major form that it go is in text text format second is images third is videos these are the three major formats that your content goes in on a website now when it goes it needs to be relevant to your audience so okay uh, one of the very good examples that just came to my mind is we are working with a brand right now in which uh, we are helping them with their ads so the funnel was given by them not by us they said we need this funnel to be implemented this is how you do the landing page and then you run the ads on it okay we did what they said we ran the ads for a week in the auction insights on google so auction insight is basically a place where you can see how you are ranking against your competitors we didn't rank that on after a week of running the ads after spending more than 50 canadian dollars on google why that happened because their website just has a form and google does not understand it Google basically thinks that they are just uh, you know doing anything. Uh, they are doing nothing. Basically, the Google crawlers, the, their programs, they, they should be able to read it. They, they should be able to get it. They cannot see something. They're exactly. And to... Google ranks your website on uh, you know how the content is, how the user journey is. If these elements are not on your website, Google won't rank you, and your customers won't be able to understand you. So it makes overall things bad. you might have all the things right but if this isn't right <laughs> everything is <laughs> everything goes wrong so these the, you know the steps that i have told you everything needs to be in place if these things work together then only your website will be a good website now next thing is as a user i come to your website but if the website does not have a clear call to action i will bounce off again you know my previous example of the apple's website if i do not find the buy button Buttons or these uh, prompts which say "shop now," "buy now," uh, "submit now," 
sign up. Uh, yeah, these are all call to action. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the uh, major things. Now the two bonus points that I kept uh, for the episode is number one, neglecting analytics and data tracking. Now you might have the best website on this world in this world, but if you are not able to track the data, if you are not able to uh, read the analytics, if you are not able to understand what the person is doing on the website, it is useless. Trust me, you won't be able to make much out of it. Today you are, uh, you are a top website in the world. Today you are a good website in the world, but tomorrow someone will come who reads data, who understands what are the uh, nitty gritties of your website, where you are lacking. They might uh, work on it and go above you. The, you know, there is a reason why the people say data is the new oil. You need to have proper tracking tools. Some of the popular tracking tools are Google analytics, Hotjar. You can use these tools to understand what is the bounce rate, how many users are coming on my website, where they are coming from, what they are doing on your website and what actions they are doing. Then you can also have heat maps on your website. So what is a heat map? As a user, I come to your website, heat maps records what the user is doing on your website. Of course, they keep the user identity safe. They do not reveal it, but they track it. So you will have video recordings. What a user is doing on your website. Are they bouncing off? Are they doing some actions or they're going out of the website? Which part of the website they're clicking more? Which, yeah, which part of the website they're clicking? Yes. So yes. So this is the ninth point. And the last point is maintenance of the website. Many people ignore this part of it and we have seen our clients suffer because of it. Because once the we, once we as the agency and the uh, digital transformation firm hands over them the website, our responsibility is over after that. They need to maintain their website on their own. So if you, uh, so if you build your retail store, of course you will do, uh, you know, cleaning every day. You will place the things on the, uh, in the store uh, properly everywhere so that the user, it, it is easily accessible to the user. You'll make sure it's clean. You will make sure the lightning is proper. You will make sure all, all of these factors. Same comes to your website. When you have a website, you need to continuously update it. Most people do not focus on this. And then one day the website has uh, become so obsolete that it cannot be recovered. And this has happened with a few clients. Right. They built their website on WordPress. They didn't update it for more than a year and or so they came back to it. My website is not working. Clients or leads who haven't updated yeah. the website for past eight years, seven years also. Yeah. <laughs> this thing, still think that the website is relevant. You might okay. uh, better not have that website. Uh, exactly. Exactly. It, there are so many chances of security threats yeah. and so much online hacking is uh, a, a different game. So it's, it's pretty much uh, relevant every throughout uh, the digital world right now. It's your phone as well. If your software is not up to date, uh, then your phone is very susceptible and it's very vulnerable to uh, uh, cyber attacks and uh, uh, hacks. So it's the same goes through, uh, same thing goes for your website as well. So your website is just like your phone. It has a lot of apps. It has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, softwares and operating systems installed installed in it, and they, if they are not up to, up to date, uh, and uh, uh, you know, so these uh, programs become vulnerable for uh, to the hackers because even the yeah. hackers are updating themselves every day, and uh, the, so it's a neck to neck race that is going on, right? So exactly. if you fall back behind even slightly, you're already vulnerable, and there are people who are not update updating themselves, uh, and they're way behind uh, they are setting ducks for the hackers right on your website steal your uh, data uh, if you have uh, god forbid if you have payment gateway and if you have attached your bank details uh, then a lot of things can go wrong uh, go very wrong <laughs> yeah go very wrong maybe it can put you out of business and i'm not uh, saying it in a normal tone but it's it, yeah, it is a very serious concern oh good yeah, yeah. If you uh, like, uh, I think our audience is already aware about this, that these days so many cyber hacks happen. Facebook data got hacked, Twitter data got hacked. Right. Imagine the scale these platforms are and still they got hacked. And uh, your website, you are not updating it for a year. Imagine the damage it can do to you and your business and the customers as well. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you, you go, go out of business, you go out of business, but if your clients uh, are affected by it, they'll sue you. <laughs> exactly. Then you are in deep shit. But then forever you're gone. <laughs> Better words. <laughs> yeah. Serious uh, problem out there. Right. But yeah, 
this pretty much uh, sums up the 10 reasons uh, that i wanted to share with our audience and i think we have covered uh, everything so yeah so i think uh, i hope this gives our audience a lot of value and uh, we will get back again in the next episode a lot more on the other aspects of the podcast that we are doing and uh, ashwin you have anything to say nothing just like savdhan india savdhan rahiye surakshit rahiye yeah no our audience should be always <laughs> alert <laughs> so thank you so much everyone for watching please do subscribe to our channel if you like it and we'll be back soon we'll be back and we'll yeah. keep improving ourselves yeah thank you so much.